Jude, my man, it's been an unbelievable year for you. How are things? Yeah, all good. Um, I've just had a couple of knocks and stuff, so I've just been looking after that mainly uh, in the gym. When you say you're in the gym, is this are you are you trying to get wham? Is this the is this the plan? I can confirm I'm trying to get wham. We'll go back to the beginning for you, right? So you spent half your life, you know, playing for Birmingham City. What does that club actually mean to you? It means the world to me, to be fair. Um, I kind of owe them everything to this point. One thing about me is when I was in the academy, I was just so impatient. Like I'd play with the 23s or the 18s and you know, I was always looking at, yeah, but I, I want to be there or I should be there. So when this kind of stuff was coming, it wasn't like I was overwhelmed or I was in awe. I was just trying to crack on really and prove to everyone that you know I'm good enough to be at that level. Making that decision to leave you know, your hometown and leave England to go to Germany, how difficult was that for you? I think it is a big step because when the clubs come in for you and you're kind of thinking, you know, Germany, like, I think you don't realise that you're kind of giving up the lifestyle that you had in England because it's so different, do you know what I mean? And my mum's been brilliant with me over here, kind of making me feel comfortable and at home. And, you know, I kind of just feel like Germany is my second home now. Did you really feel that that desire from them that, that they wanted you? And, and what did the club do to make it clear to you that they wanted you there? For me, it's all about the feeling that I get from the people and the ambition. People bring up money and all that rubbish, but I wouldn't play for a club that I genuinely didn't fall in love with. You know, I, I felt a strong connection with the people at Dortmund. They told me, you know, if you come here, we'll develop you, you'll get game time and, and you'll be an international in two years. And It took you six bloody months, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit earlier than I thought, but yeah. Dortmund is known the world over for creating unbelievable talent and nurturing talent as well. I mean, you've got yourself, Haaland, you've got Jaden as well. Like, how big a factor was that for you? Yeah, definitely. I think you, you, you look at those people and just the platform they've been given to, to perform, really. And that's, that's all I feel like I needed. I feel like, you know, they're a perfect example of that. And especially, you know, Jaden coming from England, he's been a massive help since I've got here. So from the first day, I knew I'd made the right decision, to be honest. What's the food situation like in Germany at the moment? How are you finding it? Because like not much restaurants have been open for that much time. I've I've been at home and like kind of eating my mum's meals. All the food that I like kind of come with me, so it's perfect for me really. Nice, that's amazing, that's amazing. She's gonna be buzzing watching this as well. You've shared some of like the, the abuse that you've been sent over on social media. Do you feel a sense of responsibility at all to like use your platform and use your voice? Yeah, definitely. I think every footballer should. I mean some of the abuse that I've seen is disgusting and you know I think Fans and the players can be proud of the football clubs, especially in England, for the way they've gone about the blackout. But, you know, it's almost the club saying, look, we're willing to do our part. But essentially, it comes down to the people who run the, the social media platforms that have to start taking responsibility and have to start standing up for us. You know, it's not hard to see whether you're young, white, Asian, black. You know how a person should be treated, and that's regardless of colour. And, you know, I think regardless of my age, I know that kind of thing isn't acceptable. And so, yeah, I won't be one of the people that accepts it. And if I can stand stand up for people, then I will. Who was your idol growing up? Ah, oh, that's a good one. I think uh, my idols were Rooney, was probably my first one, just because, like, he just had everything really. He was so aggressive. But then at the same time with the ball, he was like amazing. I think as I got older and I started being a bit more box to box, I just fell in love with Steven Gerrard as well and, and Zidane. So I'd probably say them three. This summer, I mean, I don't, I don't want to jinx it at all, but look, talking of England, you've, now, you've made your England debut. How much are you, you hopeful of being involved? Honestly, and this is the honest truth, I, I can't believe that I'm being like put in contention so early in my career. Like some of the players that I've gone there and trained with are a different class. So to kind of be talked about in that kind of breath is, is a real honour. I'm obsessed with the game and I have been since I was really young. You know, I've seen all these guys play for years now and, you know, I take bits from when I was like 10, 11 years old. I've been taking skills, been taking techniques from those guys. So to kind of just go up against them and test what I've learned is almost the perfect test. I enjoy trying to like break down the chess of a game almost and it seems like I'm like 17 but in my head I feel like I've watched at least 20 years of football. Honestly I hope with all everything inside of me I hope you're on that plane and, and you do bits for us in the Euros as well so I really appreciate your time mate. Nah I appreciate that bro thank you for having me on.
Hi, it's Tim Z here from MOTDX. Thank you for checking out our video on the BBC Sport YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more, and of course, hit the notification bell so then you never miss an upload. And you can check out another one of our videos right here. See you soon.